Okay, welcome back everyone to the live here in the Palo Alto Cube Studios. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This has been a great day. Vast presents Build Beyond. We have the final wrap up analyst panel here. We got uh, Dave Vellante, Rob Strecce filling in for Merv Adrian who could not make it. He had a personal uh, challenge. He's going to be taking care of some stuff at home. And uh, Sanjeev Mohan with Sancho Cube alumni. Thanks for coming on, appreciate thank, it. Thank you very much. Great. It's such a pleasure to be here. So you've been watching and absorbing all yep. the data. Dave and I have been talking for months and months about data developer. Rob, we brought it out at Linux Foundation. The data developer, yeah. new concept, and the storage company becoming a platform. That Global platform, Sanjeev, what's your analysis? This is a, the most unique thing. In my career, I've seen a lot of data companies start expanding beyond their core capabilities into the stack, uh, if you may. This is the first time I've seen a storage company come into the picture and start offering all of these new capabilities and these new, actually the capabilities by themselves are not new. The way they are offering them are very new. For example, I have heard more no's today than I have in my past. For example, we do tiering of data. There's no tiering in this case. We cache data for performance, there's no caching. We move data between operational and analytical, no ETL, no data movement, no data copies. We partition data to make it geographically available, but no partitioning. That's like six uh, things that we take for granted are not happening in this new vast uh, uh, platform. So that to me is something pretty unique. There are multi-billion dollar industries that have been formed on all those nodes. Exactly, yeah. Right? To solve yes. all those the problems. The script has been flipped. We heard the CEO Ren say earlier, Dave, we're flipping things upside down. This is interesting, disruption. Well, well so you've got, you got Snowflake coming at it from data management. Correct. And, and I guess the cloud guys too. You got Databricks coming at it from a data science perspective. Right. Now you got Vast coming in from the storage. I, I used to think this is what EMC was going to do. They bought Green Plum, yeah. right? Remember that yep. when yep. Pat bought Green, bought Green Plum, and you had HP bought Vertica, yep. the other infrastructure company. Correct. But they didn't know what to do with it. They really weren't getting into sort of data platforms other than storing data, right. Rob. Right? I mean, yeah, and I, I think that a lot of other companies are attempting to move this way. And I, and I think, like you were talking about in the previous things, I you know I came up with kind of a quadrant of where you know are the storage vendors moving up and how close are they getting to being a data platform versus the data platform, you know, data lake, data warehouse, data uh, mesh folks moving down towards mm -hmm. the storage. And I, I think that this one is the furthest along. And I think it comes back to the transparency that they provide to the end user. When you say furthest along, you mean vision-wise? Vision-wise, yeah, yeah. 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 And I think that from a vision perspective, you know, execution is still to come. I think we'll see, but it, the fact that it could be transparent all the way up to the data developer is huge. And I think that way you don't have to worry about, and I think we were talking about this earlier, about the size of the files, you know, being sub parquet file level and having that performance or mm -hmm. having not having one of those nodes where, hey, the metadata can be actually stretched right. across. It's huge, I, I think that's huge. Well, the green plum, you mentioned green plum and vertical, those were columnar databases. So great performance, but we heard Jeff Denmore say the per transactional piece is what they bring to the table. A little complimentary there. So that's one I'd like to get you guys reaction to. The second one is there's a lot of nodes, but they're still doing NAS. So we heard Jeff also say, you can do NAS everywhere now. So, mm -hmm. so does the, the architectural shift with his no, all these things that you talked about, make NAS viable now at scale? I, I think it does because, uh, but the way it, it makes it viable is when we did network attached storage, there was a lot of intelligence that would go into it. Like how do we distribute the data what VAST has done is they've abstracted all that. So with this whole concept of a global namespace, they may be doing NAS behind the scenes, but I, as an end user, I don't care. Yeah. So I get NAS without having to pay the price. So NAS is not disrupted, it's just abstracted. Yes, yeah. correct. So that's yeah. interesting, Dave, because we hear people yeah. say, oh, we're going to disrupt the NAS market. 
yeah. by taking it away. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, why, why disrupt? Like, disruption is not the cool <laughs> thing in real life. <laughs> Would you want disruption in your family? Well, we, we love disruption. We're the cube. Right, we, <laughs> cube thrives uh, on no, disruption. No, absolutely. <laughs> we love disruption. That's why we, are, we have a job security. because of Chaos <laughs> equals cash. Someone wrote a post about that. Yeah, that's that's right. thing. But in yeah. the same way, a lot of the disruption in markets comes from being non-disruptive. Yes. Right? If you your could point. do it yeah. in, right. a, in a more... PC way, why not? I mean, there's a backup example between like yeah. data domain and Avamar, right? Oh. Data domain, they just basically looked yeah. like a tape interface. It was a narrow example, but Avamar, you had to change things and yeah. you know, who won? Right? Yeah, and, no. so. and I, I think a good, a good point, and they had one of their customers on with the Allen Institute. And I think if you look at what that bio life sciences use case is really interesting where they talked about the gene sequencers, they spit out terabytes of data per day. And along with that, at the end, comes a file of metadata that kind of tells you, hey, all the files are there, these are the files, and here's all the metadata and all the descriptions of the files. That goes into a project, and then you go and do your, and the data science goes on that project. I think what's really interesting is they talk about that being, you know, that's a file, they're all files. It's a file use case. Getting closer to the gene, you know, the sequencers and being able to know and trigger off of that. So bringing the triggers, bringing those functions up to the sequencers, huge for these companies for speed of analysis and speed of drug discovery. I think that's really where these, this is a platform and not just storage. Yeah. And I think the story, I, and I'm all kidding aside, I do like disruption from an innovation standpoint. Yeah. Because things do get disrupted. Yeah. Abstraction is disruption. Yep. Non-disruptively means Correct. operationalizing it. They got all the standards, they checked yeah, the boxes. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But I think that jumped out at me is this idea of the data engine one, the mm -hmm. relationship with NVIDIA, and the fact that is an investor and a major player mm -hmm. in the platform, and the fact that their customers are experiencing value at scale. So the question is, does this open the kimono for a new kind of approach that's going to open up the business side and saying, hey, let's rethink how we handle our data? Because AI is driving a lot of change too, yep. Sanji. What's your analysis? Yeah, so my, my analysis is exactly to your point. We see there's a massive category confusion in the market. Well, what category am I in? And categories keep shifting all the time. The moment you think a product company has achieved a category, everybody jumps yes. in and then it gets overcrowded and then you're, you're rushing out trying to find a new category. The, the uh, advantage lies when you can have a full stack. So we all grew up on OSI seven layer oh, yeah. stack. So think of an OSI seven layer stack. At the bottom, you got the physical layer. That's all the chips, you know, whether it's NVIDIA or it's yeah. TPUs or Inferentia 2 or whatever it may be. So you got the physical layer, you got the data layer. So you got to own the data layer and VAST today showed their whole database and data store. Then you've got the metadata layer and to your point, that metadata layer and data layer should coexist. It shouldn't be that your metadata is sitting in a SharePoint file somewhere, it's out of date. So if you go up the stack, then you've got the AI layer, which is where a lot of activity is on today. But if the AI layer does not have mm -hmm. hooks into these other layers, then it's a standalone kind of a thing. Right. And then you move out to application layer, and then an ecosystem, and you got the seven layer stack. And if a company can operate in this stack, I, that's the road to success. And, and it actually goes back to what you were saying about our previous discussions. When you start to look at platform engineering, right, which we talked about at, at length at KubeCon and the Linux Foundation in, in Vancouver and yeah. all of these different places, this is it, what people want out of platform engineering is abstraction. I don't want to know it's a NAS. I, I want to right, be able yeah. to do build yeah. my application against the data right. and go and do that. And I think this is the key. And cloud did it, right? In, in uh, AWS does NAS, yeah. but yes. you never find out. Well, these, are the, yeah. these guys are the first ones to use data developer, a term we coined on theCUBE. Right. Two, data engineering is yeah. taking the same track as platform engineering. 
the security industry shift left was born out of the demand of taking that separate team, bringing them into operations to feed the developers in their pipeline, the ability to, to make decisions with guardrails. And that's coming with data. And these guys seeing that and their customers mm -hmm. on, the, on the keynote were telling us that. And I think those advanced customers to me are a signal to what the mainstream enterprise might grow up into. For example, and this is where I want to get you guys reaction to. People would store data for a couple of reasons. Compliance, store it, we might need it later to, to prove some GDPR thing or whatever, compliance, or legal reasons. We've got to protect ourselves, store the data. Now, people are storing data for innovation because they see value in the data. And we heard that from Pixar. So now you've got customers that are storing data for all three purposes, like AI legal, explainable AI. Did we mm -hmm. use the right licenses? So we're going to a whole nother level of data intelligence on G, where it's like the old way might be completely irrelevant. I mean, this is billions of dollars of industry right. being recast. If, in, in just, if you believe what I just said to be true, that's disruption. Yeah, well, and I think to the top of your OSI stack is, is critical for, for companies like Vast who want to build a platform. You've got to have an ecosystem. And you know, I presume they're not going to do all the security and the governance and the lineage. I mean, they'll do some of that. And obviously AI, they're going to partner for, for yeah. AI. So they've, they had to announce this, right? And show the world. And now they've, the execution piece right. comes from, in part anyway, building out that ecosystem. I mean, that is the hallmark of a successful platform. Yeah, and I, I think in one of, the, one of the slides that was in the keynote as well, where they talked about Presto, Trino, Spark. Yeah. So I, I think it's not about doing it all. It's about being part of the ecosystem. And you know, with Trino, we, they had Starburst listed up there. So when you start to look at some of the ecosystem that they look at being complementary and being, you know, building upon that platform, I could see them saying, hey, listen, you go build your Spark on us. It's going to be 10 times faster and 3,000 times cheaper than doing it you know, on Amazon using Databricks or well, something. Well, where, like where does their ecosystem come from, Dave? Does it come from new players, new entrants so, out of the yeah. organic growth of the platform? Yeah. Or they come in from industry, like um, database companies, you've got storage companies out there. I think it comes from software. You know, attracting software companies. Yeah, to say, hey, hundred percent. Come into my platform. Correct. Right, right. In, into right. your capabilities into right. my platform. Right. And and you know, Vast has to figure out how to make it attractive enough for them to do that. Part of it is product. Yeah. So uh, really ecosystem awesome. becomes really important here because you know we we talked about the the seven layer and you were mentioning that in each layer yeah. it, we could open it up and it's a whole world right out there. So if it's a physical, then there's all the security, the networking, all that. The, if you look at the data or the metadata layer, you've got the, the data engineering world surrounded by the orchestration companies, uh, observability, observability yeah, right. data catalog. <laughs> uh, there, there's a whole slew of, of a world out there yeah. in each of those layers as you move up. If you look at the, the AI layer, there's an MLOps piece, and we know how many companies showed up in MLOps, and now there's a whole LLM engineering, uh, responsible AI, and off you go into serving architecture, inferring architecture. So vast plays uh, across the stack, and then they need these ecosystem partners to provide these ancillary services. Yeah, and, and I think an important part on top of that, layered on top, is the personas they're going to be talking yep. to and how they're go to market. And I think you brought it up and George talked about it earlier as well. It, it's going to, they're going to need that ecosystem to go out and have these conversations. Yep. They can't do it alone. Correct. There. So the question for you guys is this, do you think that these guys are a breakthrough in data management? Are they streamlining this enough with the elements that it's going to change the game in data management. I think they're going to make people think a little bit differently. I, I think, um, you know, it's like when we were talking to Renan, I was asking him, you know, how much luck, how much good. <clears throat> I think they had the foresight to say, like, look, let's bet on this architecture that is going to be appropriate for AI. He even said, we, did, we didn't know when or even if it was going to happen. And I think it is happening. And it's happening in a way that it's clearly not a bolt on. It's not like, oh, hey, we're AI too. There's not a lot of AI washing going on here. They're basically saying, look, we're, we're the infrastructure for AI. You've been talking about this for, yeah. for years now. So I do think it's going to cause some people to think differently 
about how they, they approach this, and I think you're right, it comes down to execution. Yeah, and, and I think it comes down to them uh, partnering up in the ecosystem and not trying to you know, do everything, right. having yeah. focus, and I think from that focus becomes success. But I think all of the, uh, all, I think all of the other uh, storage platform vendors have been talking about this, I think, but have never been able to execute on this. And I think that's been the key. You, yeah. you hear it with GPFS and GPFS everywhere and other stuff. And I, I think it's, that's great, but that's one little tiny piece of it. That's not a platform, that's a file system. Yeah, the, the data engine jumps out at me, the data space jumps out at me. The engine, you got some compute vibe and I love the functions and yeah. triggers that yeah. gives you programmability, automation, right. sets the table for kind of self-driving right. data, if you will, pun intended. Um, <laughs> then you got the data space, which I find interesting because we've been talking about data clouds um, for years. Now you have data inter interactions. Right. So as you have data that has to interact with each other, having this distributed global namespace or data space allows for data to kind of sit anywhere and, and work with each other and still be small and manageable or big and manageable. Yeah. But when you start to address that, how does that change the game? I mean, do you see that? What do you see it, in there? It puts them in the game, right? Yeah. I mean, clearly. Uh, you, see, you, got, yeah. you got Databricks and Snowflake and the cloud guys. Right. Right, and then you got all these other database companies that are solving problems, but they're not considered like the data platform. Okay, right. so they are all vying for it. Vast now comes in and you look at the other storage companies, look at Pure, you know, they, they're not in a position to do no. it. Dell, you know, is big enough and, you know, HPE's got, their, they've got their Esmeral thing, but that's not in the conversation the same way this is. It's more like, okay, we've got a captive business and we're going to sell into that captive business. Um, it, it, you know, Snowflake and Databricks have a bigger, you know, you know platform and presence in the market. And now you got Vast coming in, you know, from the storage. I just don't see another storage company you know, I think it's even gonna be thinking about it's, doing it, this. It, yeah. Could it be right. innovator's dilemma? I mean, they're too big, like the Dell cannot just overnight try to retrofit itself into what Vast is doing at the cost of the existing. Well, it's interesting, Dell, Dell's an investor in yeah, Vast. Correct. HPE Capital. is an OEM yeah. of the Vast <laughs> yeah. file system. For NVIDIA the is an investor and partner. Yeah. Right, so, so these guys obviously looked at this and said, all right, there's something here. Right. Oh, and right. you know, you wonder, you know, where that came from. Was it the investment arm? Or was it the so who person? buys them? I, I, who I, buys them? Which I, one buys? I think they. I, mean, I think <laughs> they go public. It's it's well, you know, look, Renan, you know, the team, Israeli company. He said, I got to move to New York, or whatever, New Jersey. But this is going to be a U.S. based company. And we've seen the, how many times have we seen saw this with the Guazio, right? They yeah. kind of tried to hit some big ideas, yeah. oh. but you know they got. And they DevOps, J Frog, well, the vast majority fun. of these companies get bought. But I think that that vast, uh, no pun intended, uh, you know, could be you know ripe for an IPO when the market comes back. I think they've right. got enough market momentum. They claim to be the fastest growing infrastructure company in history. Right. You know, it does happen. If that, they that capture a big part of this AI data market, that we're starting to start setting up. As they start building now, you start to see architecture decisions around business and technical around, how do I store all this data in a way that's going to be lowest cost, highest performance with most agility. Yeah. And this is DevOps for data. I mean, we've been saying this on theCUBE. But go years. to market's going to so, be So critical, I, if Vast right? has that product, they could run the table on these use cases. But so it's going to come down to go to market, ecosystem, I mean, all the other things yeah. that matter, right? I, complete, yeah, if Vast were to go IPO tomorrow, it'll be on the basis of the storage success, which is phenomenal. But the data story is yet to be written, in my opinion. It's immature. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for Which example. Data story, their data story. Yeah, it just came out today. Yeah. <laughs> right, I mean, like the whole, it's a good you story. Know, the, vi the story is great, the vision is amazing, these guys are amazing thinkers, but we know how long it takes. Like, you know, we just discussed yeah. how long, how many companies have tried and tried and tried. Uh, you know, Oracle is still trying to perfect its solution 40 years into business. So you don't just get transactional consistency yeah. out of, Day one. Well, also operationally, they got to get a sales team. They got to get yeah. SEs. They got to right. build their go-to-market. Right. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Again, the question is, is that is to me the AI tailwind right now? 
How real does this happen? We were talking about the chaos. How many people are in production? Where's the revenue? Microsoft didn't see their earnings pop from AI this past week. So you know, is the AI money coming and when? Well, this when is really that, interesting When does that point. hit? So, so it's like you got Databricks said, okay, we're going to go buy Mosaic you yeah, know, ML. ML. You, know, uh, you got uh, Snowflake saying, okay, we're going to essentially containerize the NVIDIA stack and rely cool. on that. And of course they made another acquisition yeah. as well. But look at all the companies. You got Dell said, all right, we're going to do Project Helix. That's, we have to have an AI story, Project Helix. HPE at Discover. Well, we've got supercomputers, so we're going to turn HPC Green Lake for into an LLM. Yep. LLM business. Okay, hey, we're going to take what we have and then we're going to you know, promote it. With Vast, it was like, well, the market's coming to us, right? We don't have to make any kind of real changes here. We just have to you know, present our architecture because it's suited, at least that's my take on this, do you guys agree, suited for this new AI era? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think it's, it's a new way of approaching it. I think the distribution and the chunking and the metadata management are the three magic pieces of it that are suited for this workload. I think to the other, to the other point, at what size, and it becomes yeah. a cost value conundrum, mm -hmm. but also if you go into the Repatriate Act and gonna, stuff like that, where is the that. data coming back? Yeah. And, and is this a better, more valuable way of doing it? But, but, and they don't care, right? Because it will run in the cloud. Right. Right, across any well, cloud. Well, I mean, the it is re really repatriation a, a, question, I was just going to bring that up. Re repatriates, as we call them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we found out at AWS last week in New York when they announced the big Gen AI at Summit is that there's a lot of re right sizing going on in the cloud to save money. And we just did a big mm -hmm. special on that, cost of savings in the cloud. But they're taking that money to invest in AI. So the question is, is it the data that's going to be repatriated or the actual hardware? So right. now you have that repatriation equation. Because we're seeing AI, people are deploying. there Because you don't, they want to over-provision because they can't get enough of the stuff. So it's not like right. they're over-provisioning NVIDIA right now because yeah. they can't get it. So if they have the, the gear, I can see that on premise, that's where most of their stuff is. So to me, the data and the, the, the platform is going to be everywhere. So right now it's on premise and edge. Yeah, edge is, I mean, yeah. AI inferencing at the edge is going to yeah. be enormous. Not, so, and even if, you're, even if you're persisting a small percentage of that data at the edge, it's still a, a huge amount of data that's right. going you know, to be persisted and certainly processed. Right. So, so, so on-prem is, is not going anywhere. On-prem is going to stay important. I don't believe as much in re repatriation. Uh, I, there might be some, some of it happening, I'm sure, yes, yeah. but it's a tiny, yeah. minuscule percentage of the cloud migration. Uh, I mean, if I look at mainframe, our mainframe's going away. We've been saying it for 20 years, <laughs> but actually the mainframe business is growing, surprisingly. Tiny <laughs> amounts, but it's not going away. So I. I I, well, repatriation is semantics. I'm, I'm, for what I'm going to pull back from the cloud, I don't see that happening. But yeah, net right. new AI capabilities on premise is interesting. Yeah, Edge, obviously, correct. Is, is not repatriated. It's never been patriated or whatever. Yeah, cloud, whatever that's true. It. But yes. I think the hybrid yeah. operations is the key. This yeah. is where I think this global namespace and the unification yeah. angle is probably the most important aspect of this story. Yeah, yeah because that, AI is going to go where the data is. And, and data will have to be managed with commute and workloads. We didn't talk about yeah. workloads. There's no, so I, the next question for me is what, what's the workloads look like? Because right. yeah. when you move workloads to the data, right. that's a different discussion, I, right? So Correct. I, and I think this is, this is the most uh, standout feature of what I've heard at, with Vast story, is that as the data comes into the platform, the data engine is inferring the header or, or doing some inference and it's deciding what functions to execute. It could be compute, it could be data quality, it could be trained machine learning model. So basically data has become the center of gravity and everything is, is being driven by data. This is new, all this time, I, as a data person, have felt like a, a stepchild because <laughs> 20 years later, it was all about infrastructure people <laughs> ruling. Then it was all about application people stealing the limelight. So for the first time, data is stealing the limelight. Yeah. 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 Right, guys, we got one minute left. Um, buildbeyond.ai is a website, check it out. Vast presents buildbeyond.ai. Final minute, let's go around the horn here. Summarize, Dave, the data platform. What? is vast presenting, what does build beyond mean? We'll go around the horn. I, I think we'll start with a, a new way to think about infrastructure for AI. And I think that's really what today was all about. Yeah, I, I think it's about 
data anywhere and bringing it to the right place, either compute to that the data or storage to the, or data to the compute. And I think that's huge. I think it's making data a first class citizen and the driver of the story, AI story. I think data is the oxygen in the bloodstream that flows all through the organization globally, has to be freely available and applications, it's going to be the rise of the data developer. This is going to be a yeah. inflection point for data as code. And I yeah. think that's going to be a big yeah. thing. So go to, go to, go to buildbeyond.ai, check it out. This is theCUBE's live performance here in Palo Alto for theCUBE team and for Vast Data presenting Build Beyond. Thanks for watching.